Diablo is the main villain of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 5, Ventuareo. Throughout the part, he was covered in shadows. Originally, he was not the villain. He was actually the guy who employed our main heroes, Pashon. Uh, he gave them a mission to bring his daughter, Trish Una, to him. But once he got there, it was revealed that this whole time his plan was to murder his own daughter. After failing to murder Trish, our heroes decided to turn against their boss in an attempt to take him down and protect Trish. Hello, I'm Base Element 3, and today I want to introduce a new series to you guys, Villain Talk. So, first let's get into Diavolo's past. So Diavolo's past, more than any other villain in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, is covered up in the most secret. Um, so as far as we know, Diavolo's mother was in prison in all-female prison, um, completely female. The workers, the warden, the other uh, inmates were all women. And despite that fact, somehow, despite being there for two years, she got pregnant. Uh, she swore up and down that she was pregnant for two full years and that her husband or whoever the heck it was that got her pregnant had uh, been dead, you know, long, has been dead for a while now. Diablo was born and after being born he was taken away from his birth mother and uh, taken in by a church. Um, the, the pastor of this church was Diablo's adopted father and he was a good man. Diablo lived his life very meek and shy, um, but he was overall a good boy. Eventually his uh, father decided that he would buy him a car and when he started to dig out an old shed in order to make a garage for that car he found the body of Diavolo's birth mother with her eyes and mouth sewn shut and she was still alive. The next day the church burned down and Diavolo's adopted father happened to die in the fire. Along the way, Diavolo met a chick, got her pregnant, ran away, found a meteorite, created six stand arrows, and, and created an organization called Passion that runs Italy. So, Diavolo. Uh, one major aspect of Diavolo's character is the fact that he has dis dis disassociative personality disorder. Um, but this is to a new degree. See, normally with dissociative personality disorder, someone has multiple personalities that come out at different times. But in the case of Diavolo, um, he has two personalities. There's his main personality, Diavolo, and then there was his, and then there's his alternate personality, Dopio. But along with their personality changing, the two of their appearances drastically change. Dopio is scrawny and weak, while Diavolo's big, muscly, manly man. Um, and uh, so first let's talk about Dopio's personality. So now, so Dopio is not aware of his condition. He is not aware that him and Diavolo are one person. He thinks they're two different people. And that he is Diavolo's, you know, right, well not really right hand man, but his uh, most trusted ally in the gang. Um, Dopio is pretty, honestly, I kind of fucking love Dopio. He's a silly, goofy kid who is probably way in over his head and just has mad respect for his boss. Um, Diavolo, on the other hand. So Diavolo, like I said, since he was covered in shadow, like 90% of part five, he, uh, we, we didn't get much out of him. We knew he was very secretive. Um, we knew that you know he would do anything to not be in the limelight. Uh, when he eventually showed up, it was a while before we really got any real personality traits out of him. Um, it wasn't until really around his death. Um, so around his time he died, we started learning more how Diavolo thinks. Diavolo believes he's a man chosen by fate. That fate has a plan for him, and that plan will lead him to money, power, and wealth. He believes he is immortal, and as long as he believes in, the, in fate, he will be good. Um, I, I, I'm guessing that wasn't true, considering how he got fucked up by Giorno. Um, Speaking of that, any good uh, main villain needs some good powers. So Diavolo has two stands. His main stand, King Crimson, and a substand named Epitaph. So one thing about Diavolo is that he can, uh, first of all, he is aware of his multiple personality disorder, and he can basically switch between Dopio and Diavolo whenever he wants. While he is in his main Diavolo form, he can use both his stands 
to their utmost degree. Meanwhile, Dopio can only use Epitaph and can use the arms of King Crimson. King Crimson's ability is called Time Skipping. Uh, basically, how I put basically it allows them to skip through time. Uh, basically, the best way I could put it is if there is if time is a scripted event, a line. So let's say let's say you're walking down a sidewalk, and after taking five steps, you're going to trip. Uh, first of all, using Epitaph, Epitaph's ability is to see into the future, so Diablo can see what's going to happen in five steps. Someone, that guy that he's looking at, is going to trip. And what King Crimson allows him to do is that he can skip past those five steps and just get straight to when the guy trips. Um, from other people's perspective, things just seem to have moved a bit faster or have gone out of the way they're supposed to be. But from Diavolo's perspective, you know, he can he knows you know, perfectly what what happened. Um, using this ability, you know, Diavolo can do some wicked stuff. Like if his opponent's running towards him, he can skip time to where his opponent's already gotten to him. And his opponents, they're gonna, you know, freak out, like, whoa, wasn't I just, weren't I just, like, over there? How did I get over here? And while they're freaking out, Diablo can take that time to attack. Another thing is, um, there have been multiple stands throughout the series that have shown signs of super strength, uh, like Jotaro's Star Platinum, for example. Even Star Platinum had, you know, limits to what it can do. Uh, King Crimson is a much stronger than average stand, you know, it can punch through people. Uh, something that the world or Star Platinum never displayed to be able to do. <laughs> it's also not a very quick stand, though. You know, it's uh, it's pretty slow. Um, as for Diablo himself, he's a fairly intelligent man. I wouldn't call him a super genius, but he knows how to use his stand uh, to its utmost degree. Uh, King Crimson isn't the toughest ability to be. It's a very strong power, but honestly, I've always just kind of thought of the watered-down version of Dio's The World, as, you know, the world can completely stop time, um, you know, King Crimson can skip certain events, and honestly, I mean, skip time, stop time, I think stopping time's better. Um, and now that I've talked a bit about Diablo and, and, you know, his role in the story, his abilities, and stuff like that. It's time for my thoughts on the guy. Personally, first let me just talk about part five in general. Now, I love all the parts of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. These are all the parts I've read. At the, as of the recording of this video, I've read the entirety of parts one through six, and I am up to, um, I have just uh, gotten to when Hot Pants was introduced in Steel Ball Run. Um, so while I like all the parts of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure that I've read, I'd definitely say Vento Areo is the weakest of the parts. And I think that's in part due to its main hero, Giorno Giovanna, and its main villain, Diavolo. Now Giorno, I just think is kind of a weak main character. He does not have very much pull to him. You know, a lot of the other Jojos, like Joseph, Jolene, even Jotaro, have a lot more going for them. But I still overall like Giorno. I think he's a good character, a good hero. He's just not, he's much more, I'd say that he would be better as a supporting character, like a Kakyoin or a Busarati, as opposed to a main character. Diablo, on the other hand, I really don't like this fucker at all, really. Uh, and honestly, I think it's just because of how little we know about his past. Diablo's connected to so much in the series. He created the Stand Arrows, which were the main plot point throughout the entirety of Part 4 and a majority of Part 5. He is the reason why Dio and most of Dio's uh, subordinates even had stands. Um, one part of Diablo's past is that he, you know, a meteorite crashed to Earth, you know, years ago, and Diablo found it. And from this meteorite, he crafted six Stand Arrows. He kept one for himself, and that's how he got his stand, uh, King Crimson. And he sold the remaining five to Enyaba, and Enyaba used one of these five to, you know, shoot Dio with it, and Dio got his stand the world. Uh, so, you know, he's the reason why Dio, you know, exists. Not to mention, his stand arrows have been a thing that have come back into play. You know, Keicho Nijimura, who got his hand on one of these stand arrows, and that's why, like, most of the stand users in Part 5 were around. Um, you know, Yoshikage Hira. That's why he has his stand, killing all three of his stands. So, you know, Kira would not be a threat if it wasn't for Diablo creating this. Diablo is somehow 
connected to so much that happens later on and previously in the series, and yet we just know so little about him. Now granted, you don't need to know everything about a character to enjoy him. You know, sometimes it's better to keep things secret, but it's the fact that we know so little about him, and he's just not a very interesting bad guy. Uh, you know, him being able, first of all, his whole, you know, fate picked me thing kind of came out of nowhere. You know, he wasn't really like that throughout the rest of the part. Uh, he's one of the strongest stand users in the series, yet his goal is just to, you know, control a gang. Now, granted, it is a powerful gang. They basically control all of Italy, and he's filthy rich. So, granted, that goal isn't all that bad, but compared to what other villains in the series, you know, aspire towards, Yoshikai Akira, you know, ser mass serial killer, um, you know, Dio wanted to take over the world, Pucci wanted to attain heaven, Diavolo, he really didn't want anything. He was much more of a, the hero, I was like, okay, let, let me, let, uh, let me put it like this. Dio wanted to kill the Joe Stars, and Holly was dying because of him. That's why the Stardust Crusaders went after Dio. Kira was a serial killer. He killed Shigechi. That is why, you know, the other members went after uh, Kira, along with him uh, killing Raimi. Diavolo really, like, he didn't do much. They worked for him. But even from the very beginning, Giorno wanted to take him down uh, because he sold drugs to kids. Okay, I guess that's kind of a reason. And later on, he wanted to kill Trish. They want to protect their new friend, Trish. All right, but really, ask yourself. When you think of a villain in any series, and you simply say, what do they want? You know, villains and heroes and characters in general are simple when you break down to it. They're people with likable personalities who we might identify with, or we might look up to, who have a goal they want to achieve. In anything, anime, manga, anything. Batman wants to protect Gotham. Naruto wants to become Hokage. Dio wants to attain heaven. Um, friggin' even, you know, Joe Turo wants to protect his family and friends. I cannot tell you what it was, other than keeping his identity a secret, that Diavolo wanted. And keeping your identity a secret is not a very compelling, you know, friggin' motivation for a villain, really. Um, so that's it. I, I just, I can't, I don't really like Diavolo. <laughs> I just can't put it in many more words. He's not a very good villain, in my opinion. You know, I like Ventoreo. I like Ventoreo a lot. And I like a lot of the other villains, like uh, Grateful Dead stand user, uh, Beach Boy stand user. If you, if you realize something, a lot of the time in Jonas Star Adventure, I don't remember villains' names. I just remember their stand names. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of other villains in Part 5 are way cooler than Diavolo. I like Dopio. Dopio is just... What was it? Dopio should have been the main villain. <laughs> And that's what Dopio should have been. But Diablo himself, I just think out of all the main villains I've experienced so far, he has the least. He is the least interesting, the least compelling, and it's just kind of a shame. Uh, but how did you like this, guys? Leave in the comments what you thought about Diablo. Uh, you know, who is your favorite and least favorite JoJo villain? Your favorite and least favorite JoJo part? Uh, uh, let me just throw this out there. So Vento Rail I still like, but it's my least favorite part. Uh, my favorite part though is Stone Ocean. Uh, sadly, Poochie will not be next. See, next time in Villain Talk, I'm gonna take you back to the past to talk about a certain vampire. Peace out, everyone.